Welcome to Red Recaps. For today's video, we are going to explain a one-of-a-kind horror film, telling us that if you are in the light, you are safe. But once that light turns off, hide or run for your life. This is Lights Out. Make sure to watch until the end to discover how a dysfunctional family survives the threat of a dark, driven enemy. Without further ado, let's get into the video. In a mannequin factory, the movie begins with Paul receiving a call from his son Martin to inform him that his mom, Sophie, is acting strange lately. Then Paul assures that Sophie will get better soon. On the other hand, Esther, Paul's assistant, is locking up the warehouse when she sees a black figure in the room as she turns off the lights. She notices a silhouette in the dark, but the figure vanishes when she turns on the lights. To confirm, she turns off the light once more and the figure reappears. She repeats the process several times, and as she turns on and off the lights, the figure continues to appear closer and closer to her. She left the lights on and told her boss, Paul, what was going on, but he responded that she needed to go home. Paul decided to go home, but remembered what his assistant said about seeing something. He decided to walk through the dimly lit warehouse where he came across the same figure Esther saw. The crouched figure began to stand up when it noticed Paul. Suddenly the lights went out, so Paul immediately turned those back on to discover that the figure is closer to him this time. Paul ran away, but the figure scratched his leg. As he stood up in a lit area, he noticed his wounds on his leg. Paul realizes that the figure only appears in the darkness, so he dashed to his well-lit office and shut its door and took a baseball bat. The lights suddenly went out and Paul was mutilated, dismembered, and killed by the entity. The scene was followed by Rebecca and a man she is seeing, Brett, in a bedroom. A few days later, at Sophie's house, Martin is about to fall asleep when he hears his mother talking to someone. He walks out of his room to see his mother having an argument with someone while the lights are off. Martin becomes scared since he knows that it is only him and his mother in the house. Sophie apologizes for waking up his son and tells him to go back to sleep. As he returns to his room, he looks back once more at his mom to notice a hand appear at the corner of the door where his mom is standing. Rebecca and Brett are in town. At the same time, Martin is in the nurse's office after falling asleep in class again. Since the school was not able to contact Sophie, they contacted his stepsister, Rebecca. She and Brett meet the Child Protective Services and they tell her Martin's case. She drove Martin home, but he wants to stay at her sister's place even just for a night to sleep, but Rebecca insists that he will be just scared there because of the scary posters on her walls. As they are going inside, he tells her that someone is coming over to talk to their mom, and he mentioned the name Diana. Rebecca was stunned for a second and informed Martin that Diana was not real and was only created and imagined by their mother. When Sophie welcomes her children, when inside, Martin immediately goes to his room to pack his things. This time, Rebecca also discovers that their mom, Sophie, is not taking her antidepressants. This results in an argument, and Rebecca took Martin to her apartment and reminded her mother to take her medicines before departing. Despite the dark-themed posters on her sister's apartment, Martin unpacks his things and tests if his flashlight works. In the middle of the night, Rebecca finds Martin missing from his bed. Upon hearing noises, she gets up. However, she looks to the source of the noise and finds a hunched figure scratching the floor near the bedroom door. As the lights from outside blinking, Rebecca sees the figure appearing and disappearing. The figure noticed her and attacked her. With the help of lights from outside the apartment, she escaped and immediately turned on the lights in her room. She continues searching for Martin and finds him in the bathtub sleeping holding a flashlight. The next day, the Child Protective Services went to Rebecca's place to warn her about her taking Martin against her mother's will. She argued that their mother is not in the proper mental state to take care of Martin. Though she said she can be a responsible guardian, Child Protective Services took Martin home. While thinking what she will do to his brother, she notices something on her floor. It was a scribble with the name Diana, with a drawing beside it. She then remembers the incident when she was very young. When she was around Martin's age, she remembered hearing a strange cracking and scratching from the dark while drawing her family. She followed the noise toward her closet and turned the lights on. Afterward, her drawing fell to the ground. 
She picked up the paper and noticed someone removed her father from her drawing and inserted itself into it, naming itself Diana. When she and Brett decided to sneak into Sophie's house to gather information about Diana, she gets a hidden key and lets themselves in. Rebecca immediately goes upstairs and finds a box containing information about Sophie and her previous stay in a mental institution when Sophie was a child. She discovers that Sophie met a girl there named Diana, who had a rare medical skin condition and could not go out into the light. She also discovered that the doctors used many lights to perform experimental procedures on Diana, which resulted in her death. She then went to her old room and found her old drawing. Suddenly, the door is shut. She screams for Brett to hear her, but a force pulls her to the ceiling, strangling her through her necklace. When Brett hears Rebecca's scream and manages to open the door, the light from the hallway causes Diana to disappear and release Rebecca. They immediately took the box of information and ran outside the house. On the other hand, Martin is glad that he and his mother bonded and had a quality time together. They even talk casually on how the both of them are holding up after Paul's death. While having a conversation with Martin, Sophie takes a break, telling Martin she will be right back. She turns off the lights. Martin becomes frightened and Sophie tries to reassure him, telling him about her friendship with Diana. She is convincing Martin that Diana is a friend and can only stay if the lights are off. Martin freaks out when Diana appears beside him. He tries to turn the lights on, but when Diana is about to stop him, Sophie gets in a way and hits her across the face, knocking Sophie to the ground. Martin manages to escape. Martin reaches Rebecca's apartment to tell her that their mom is getting worse. Martin explains what happened and tells that Diana exists. Rebecca believes him and explains who Diana is. Rebecca discovers that Diana appears when Sophie is at her worst mental state, allowing Diana to control her. She also added that Diana died during an experiment and it is only Sophie who is her only connection to this world. They plan to make Sophie feel and think better, but Martin said that Diana will not let that happen since his dad Paul tried it and paid the price. That night, together with Brett, they went to Sophie's room. While trying to persuade Sophie, she ignores all Rebecca's attempts to convince her that Diana is dead, but her spirit is trying to kill them. Still, Sophie dismisses her and walks upstairs to her room. On the other hand, Rebecca persuades Martin to sleep over in her place instead, but Martin refuses to leave his mom. Then Rebecca decides that the three of them will be staying the night. Brett on the couch and Rebecca in Martin's room. Rebecca enters Sophie's room informing her that she will be staying the night. Sophie opens the door as she walks away from the bedroom door, expressing her gratitude to Rebecca for allowing her to spend the night with her. While embracing Rebecca, Sophie takes her hand and slips her a note and goes back as if someone is pulling her clothes inside. Rebecca checks the paper which reads, I need help. Subsequently, Rebecca rushed to get her mother's medicines only to find out that all of them were expired when a total blackout occurred. Brett investigates outside with a flashlight while Rebecca searches the basement for the fuse box. When Martin wakes up, he discovers Rebecca is gone. Then he takes a candle and walks down the hall. Diana appears beside him. Trying to escape, Martin stumbles while still holding the candle and suddenly, Diana starts to drag him away. But Martin turns around and shines the candle on her. He escaped and found his sister in the basement. While both of them are in the basement, Rebecca realizes that it was a trap, so they rush upstairs. However, Diana locked the basement door. At the same time, Brett discovers that Rebecca and Martin are trapped in the basement and tries to open the door. Diana attacked Brett and knocked on the floor, but he survived when he pointed his cell phone at Diana. Brett rushed outside to call for help. Outside, Diana grabs and attacks him. She lifts him above her head, but Brett grabs his car keys and presses the car alarm button. His car's headlights turn on, forcing Diana to disappear. He immediately went inside his car to seek help. Upon realizing that her children are in danger, Sophie realizes that Diana is not her friend. She tells Diana that she cannot survive because Diana has attached herself to Sophie as a spirit. Sophie is about to take her medication when Diana walks in and hits her across the room. Still in the basement, Rebecca uses papers to keep the furnace fire going. Then, Martin finds an ultraviolet light. However, they have found out that this light does not affect Diana. She was almost hit by Diana while getting a shovel, but Martin saves her by flashing a light on Diana. They went out to the basement and screamed for their mother. When police arrived from Brett's efforts, the siblings were rescued, but one of the officers was killed by Diana. 
Rebecca tries to warn the other officer to use a flashlight in order to survive, but the officer does not listen and is also killed by Diana. While the siblings have the chance to get out of the house, Martin refuses, since he does not want to leave his mother behind. When Brett arrives, Rebecca tells him to look after her brother while she gets their mother. While on the second floor, Diana slowly approaches her from behind, but Rebecca burns Diana's hand using the flashlight. Feeling enraged, Diana lifts Rebecca and throws her from the second floor balcony, but fortunately, she looks unharmed. Diana goes to Rebecca with an attempt to kill her, but Sophie appears with a gun pointing at Diana. She tells Diana that she will be held accountable if anything happens to her children. Sophie pointed the gun to her head and pulled the trigger. As Sophie dies, Diana vanishes into dust. Rebecca crawls immediately to her mother's dead body as she cries. The movie ends with the promise that the three of them will live together with no notion of leaving one another behind. That's it guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to leave comments regarding your thoughts about the movie. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to get notified for our next upload. If you'd like to watch this movie, check out the links in the description. Thanks for watching Red Recaps, and see you all in the next video.